Hello everyone! Welcome to my second video about hyperbola. I am Rex Gavin and I will be discussing to you a lot of things in a graph of a hyperbola this time. So, I will be introducing to you the elements in a graph of a hyperbola. Uh, you will be using this one in graphing sooner. It would be better that we will know all of this before we start the graphing discussions to avoid difficulties in doing it. Okay? So, we will be using this illustration for this discussion. But this is a hyperbola opening upward and downward. So, notice that it always opens in opposite directions. In the previous video, I was using the hyperbola opening right and left. This time, we have the hyperbola opening up and down. Okay? I mentioned about the transverse axis in the previous video. Okay? In the previous, I said... Transverse axis measures 2A, or the length of the transverse axis is always 2A. Okay? The transverse axis of the hyperbola is always this line segment. You will know that it is the transverse axis because the endpoints of this line segment will always be the vertices of our hyperbola. Also, let me label this one as the V1 and V2, or the vertex 1 and vertex 2. Okay? Now, we have this second axis, which is the conjugate axis. Okay? It's always perpendicular to the transverse axis, and the endpoints are the co-vertices of our hyperbola. So, we have co-v1 and co-v2. So, these are the two axes of our hyperbola. If you will recall, in ellipse, we had the major axis and the minor axis. This time, we have the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. Actually, if you will notice, they are just the same except that they are the axes in different conic sections. Major axis and minor axis are in ellipse. Then we have this transverse axis and conjugate axis in hyperbola. Both the major axis and the transverse axis are line segments whose endpoints are the vertices. Right? And both the minor axis and the conjugate axis are line segments whose endpoints are the co-vertices. So basically, you can relate transverse axis as the major axis in ellipse, and the conjugate axis in hyperbola is related to the minor axis of the ellipse. Okay? Then we have this new term, which is only found in hyperbola, the auxiliary rectangle. It doesn't exist in ellipse, only in this conic section hyperbola. So the auxiliary rectangle is this one. Okay. So notice that the sides will always pass through the vertices and the co-vertices of the hyperbola. It's known as auxiliary because it is a helping rectangle. Okay. So how does it help? It helps you draw the asymptotes. Okay, in this hyperbola, in this connect section, we have the asymptotes. Uh, it doesn't have, or the ellipse doesn't have asymptotes, only this hyperbola. So basically, the, the, new, the new elements in graphing are the auxiliary rectangle and the asymptotes because transverse axis and conjugate axis are just related to the minor axis and the major axis. Right? So auxiliary rectangle and asymptotes are new. This elements are only in the graph of a hyperbola. So again, how does the auxiliary rectangle help? It helps us, again, draw the asymptotes. Just take the non-adjacent corners of our rectangle, then out of the non-adjacent corners, we can just draw a straight line. Okay? So that orange line is our first asymptote. Again if, you, again, if you can still recall the asymptotes in your junior high school, it is always a line of which the curves are getting closer and closer to it. Okay? So that means this asymptote can be extended until infinity and this green curved line which is the hyperbola can also be extended until infinity. Okay? So when these lines will be extended until infinity, they will just get closer and closer, but will never meet. 
Okay, so they will never be intersecting. Then on the other hand as well, we can just get the non-adjacent corners again and draw the second asymptote. Okay, so basically we have now the asymptote 1 and asymptote 2. Notice that all these lines, including the conjugate axis and the transverse axis, meet at some point. Okay? It is the center of our hyperbola. So you can just, or it is safe to say, that the asymptotes, the conjugate axis, and the transverse axis are intersecting the center of our hyperbola. Aside from that, it is also safe to say the that the center of the hyperbola is also the center of the auxiliary rectangle. Okay? Now the rest are just the same with ellipse. Okay, so remember in an ellipse there are two foci, so hyperbola also has two foci. So uh, I have here the focus 1, f1, and focus 2, f2. The same as ellipse, hyperbola also has two lateral recta. Okay, so we have on top passing through f1, and the other one is passing through f2. Then the endpoints are just the same with the ellipse. We will just label them as R1, R2, R3, and R4. Okay. Then, lastly, we have this direct process of our hyperbola. The same as ellipse, there are two direct processes of the hyperbola as well. Okay. So, that's it for now. Bye.